Welcome once again to the JLo Artist YouTube channel. Thanks for joining me on this artistic adventure. Today we'll be working with ink, pen and ink. So have your kneaded eraser, a number two or an HB pencil, handy, and any type of ink that you would like to use. But make sure that it's archival, that it's permanent, that it's black, and a smooth ink. I probably recommend a Pigma Micron pen. They come in various colors and sizes, but whatever you feel comfortable with, have that nice and handy. And let's start doing some ink drawing. When you're composing your picture, you got to be thinking about placement, where this is going to go. So again, we're going to use our number two pencil, and we're just going to do a really quick sketch. I call this a stick figure, but it's not really a stick figure. It's more like a glorified stick figure. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come over and say, okay, where's his arm? I want his arm to almost touch. I want it to be right over there somewhere. And if that's, that's his shoulders and his arm is down in here somewhere, his hand's going to be down in here, shoulder's going to be up here somewhere, his head's got to be up here somewhere. And it needs to be close to the top, but I want to leave myself a little bit of breathing space up there. So if I say, okay, there's his head over there, then I can just kind of make this little um, little block almost with a rounded top there. That's, that's where his head is. Give yourself a little bit of breathing space. Okay, I'll try and draw a little heavier. Let me see if I can punch that down. Is that better? Okay. Sorry, I, I do draw light because I have to erase this. And I hate erasing heavy lines. So um, just adjusting his head a little bit. I might want to move it over just a little bit. Here's his shoulders. Um, and remember, your shoulders kind of, it, it's good to kind of have an idea of, of muscles and, and bones and stuff. So maybe his hand's going to almost touch down here. That would make his head just a little bit smaller. So see how I'm adjusting? And, and as you adjust, draw it right first. And then if it bothers you, you can take your kneaded eraser and get rid of stuff. And don't get too too caught up in this drawing part because as we draw with ink you can also adjust oftentimes when you're drawing superheroes uh, the head gets a little smaller anyway uh, especially if you like Marvel or DC type comics uh, the heads are quite small and the bodies are much bigger So I got to still adjust that a little bit there. So it it is kind of a stick figure, but it's kind of a glorified stick figure. And you're just trying to get the, the simplest shapes that you can. Arms are like just cylinders or rectangles. And again, you got to keep adjusting until you got it about right. Tell you what, round shields are really difficult to use if they're, uh, if you got a strap on it like this. Round shields are easier if you're holding the center, they have like a central boss like the Vikings used to use. Much easier to use. Just a thought for you Captain America fans. He 
He almost looks like he's got Batman's belt on. What's he carry in there? Does anybody know? So, I, again, I'm not trying to get details. I'm just blocking in things, uh, trying to get them as close as I can to where things go. The one thing I do need to spend a little bit of time doing is that face, the head and face. Because that is the important part. And everybody kind of judges your drawing by how well the head's done. And so we want to spend a little bit of time and get that just right. Now, if you're doing a portrait, it's important that everything is perfectly put where it needs to go. But we don't have to do a portrait, you know, unless you want to. But then... There's a lot of pressure there and trying to get everything right. So I'm going to just zoom into the head and uh, we're going to try to get that head just right. Everything else will kind of fall into place. You can get that head right. Everything else will fall into place. So now what I'm going to do is a little bit of this is almost a profile. It's not quite. You can see a little bit of the the eyebrow and this other side of the lip there. So it's almost a profile, not quite. So in order to do that, I just have to remember where everything is. If this is his head, and of course his hair is going to stick up a little bit higher than that. So if you think about it, the hair is going to be up in there, his head's down here. Right about in the middle is where his eyes are. So I can just kind of go in and say, well, there's going to be an eye about right in there somewhere. And, of course, he's going to have a little uh, part of his bridge of his nose is right there. You can see a little bit of that other eyebrow. And rather than draw his nose, I'm just going to draw this little line there that just says this is where the bottom of the nose is supposed to go. His mouth is slightly open, and so I can come in there and just do this little triangle for his mouth, his open mouth. Now, hopefully, that's in about the right places where everything goes. If not, we can adjust it a little bit. Also, notice that it's not exactly straight up and down like this. His chin and his forehead are not exact. His forehead is out just a little bit farther than his chin is. I'm just going to take my kneaded eraser and I'm just going to get rid of some of that sketchy stuff that I put in there. Now, most of this we're going to do in ink, so that's about all I really need right now. I am going to block in where his ear goes. And if you think about it, the top of his eyebrow, or where his eyebrows are, if they're, if they're right here, he goes straight over. Somewhere up in there is the top of his ear. And somewhere around the, the end of his nose, right down in here, is about where the bottom of his ear goes. If you look at people, that's about normal. Your ear is about from the top of your eyebrow to the tip of your nose. And so knowing that, I can just kind of do this little C shape and just say that's, that's kind of where his ear goes, somewhere about in there somewhere. Give or take a little bit. This might be back just a little bit. And I can even block in where his hair goes. Just say, yeah, it's going to be about right in there somewhere. He doesn't, you can't really see his jawline, so I'm not going to block in the jawline. Although there is kind of a shadow that's right there that kind of tells you where it goes. 
And then right here, this is called this is the sternocleidomastoid. It's a muscle that comes off the corner of your head, right behind your ear, and it goes down to the center of your chest. So right there, this comes down here, and it connects right in between your clavicles, the little bones that come in here. That, often when you're doing necks, that's, that's the thing that you can see when you're doing necks. I'm just going to block that in just to tell me where it's at. So here we go. We're going to start with the eye and just look at your little shape. I mean, I just put a little dark shape in there and I'm not sure that's exactly in the right place, but I'm just going to go for it. Start with the top eyelid and it's just a little arch because we're looking sideways on the eye. You can see a little bit of that inside of the eye and a little bit you can't really see the tear duct there. But that bottom part of the eye is very light, so I'm just going to leave it out. His, he's kind of looking out at the corner of his eye, so his eye is not over here looking out this way. He's more looking the other way. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to put a little dot right there, a little edge right there. He's got a little bit of light in his eye, and so instead of drawing the pupil as a dot, I'm going to do it as a C shape, just like we did before, and leave that little dot out, that little spot of light. And there's really not much more you do there. If, you, if his eyes are a little darker and you think, well, I need a little dot or a little line in there, you can, you can darken them up just a little bit, but leave that little spot of light out. There is a little bit of an edge that comes underneath. And so I'm going to just hatch through that just barely. With a dot or two. You can see where his eyebrow goes. So maybe what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hatch through that shape that goes over his eye to his eyebrow and down his nose right there. So I'm just going to hatch through that shape. Just a little bit. And if it's darker, you can always go back into it and darken it up a little bit. What's up? Oh, Joshua, this is for you, sir. Did you know that? Huh. Then I'm going to go back into it. Hatch the weight some more because it's fairly dark right there. And now I'm going to do his eyebrow. Well, I'm going to hatch it a little bit, just a little bit more there. And here's his eyebrow. I'm just going to hatch through that, make it a little darker. Um... Just over on the corner of the table. Some little dots and dashes, and then I'm going to hatch through the rest of that eyebrow. And that's it. We may have to come into it and add a little bit more, but right now, I think we're okay. And while we're at it, we might as well do these little um, worried lines that go up his, his eyebrow right there. There's just little dots and dashes, just a couple little. Maybe some from the other side. Little dots and dashes. And then here's his other eyebrow. You only see that much of it, just a little bit. And a little bit of that other eye and eyebrow. And it's just a dark shape. It's really hard to see anything else. But you might see a little bit of his eyelash there. And I'm just imagining it there because I've done so many people. So if I put just a little dark edge right at the bottom and that kind of gives you the illusion that that's the top part of his eyelid. 
the bridge of his nose, let's just leave out most of that. In fact, if you just do kind of a little dot and just on the tip of the nose, a couple little dots there, and then where the shadow comes underneath the nose, you can put that little shadow under there, just a little curve. And then where his nostril is, if he comes straight down from the inside of his eye right there, straight down, his nostril's right about in there somewhere. I'm just going to put this little zigzaggy shape around the nostril. Little dots. I know I'm going to have to go into that and go a little darker. But your nostril is just like this little upside-down Nike swoosh. I know we've talked about this before, but I'm just going to kind of come up and do this little, little upside-down swoosh and then hatch down through that. And I'm going to go up the nose as well. Hatch, 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 hatch. And I might want to hatch all the way through what I just did. And there's a shadow that comes down there. So I may want to just go all the way down through here and hatch that whole section. Very, very lightly. And over the bridge of his nose where his nostril comes around, I might hatch through that very lightly. Now, if we got rid of all that graphite, just to show you what's going to happen, that edge where the nose is, even though it's missing, your eye kind of makes that connection. That's called a subliminal line. And so because the top of his nose is so light, you can just leave it out. You can see his little philtrum. I'm going to just hatch through that, kind of comes down. And his lip is right on that. Now, the bottom part of his lip is fairly dark, so I can... I can put that in there. And the whole lip section is just this triangle with a little curve on that top side. So I'm just going to do that. Hatch, 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 hatch. His mouth is open, and so there's a little um, rectangular shape right there. It's not totally rectangular but you can just kind of hatch through that. If you were to draw lines around his lips, they look funny. They look kind of like, I don't know, somebody glued them on. We may have to go through and hatch some more of that. That's okay. We can do that. The top part of his lip is really light too, or the top part of his bottom lip. And so I might do just a little dot or dash right there just to bring it out a little bit and then let alone and pick it up on the bottom and again i'm going to hatch through that whole section that's right there hatch 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 very lightly leave out that top section and again if we get rid of our graphite you'll see it better those teeth are might be a little bright and so I might hatch through those teeth, just two or three little, or you can use dots. But just to darken them in a little bit so they're not quite so bright. The uh, top part of his chin is also lighter. So we're going to do the same thing we did there as we did with the nose. The nose needs to go darker. I'm going to hatch back through the nose. Just that tip needs to go a little darker. I actually know that I've got to come back into it and hatch through it anyway. Now it's chin. We're going to do the same thing with the chin. We're going to leave out this little section here, and we'll just pick up this little bottom part of the chin. And that whole section is going to get hatched through. Hatch, 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 hatch. Some of that is a little darker, like right, right in this section here. So I'm going to just switch around and hatch through that again, but go in a little different direction. So it'll darken it up just a little bit. 
And again, I might have to go through and, and do some more up in there. Even his cheek up in here. I could probably hatch through some of that. I could come up here and just hatch through some of this. Very lightly. Like I say, we could come back in and do more if we need to. This inside of his eye, I'm going to just put a couple little dots and dashes right there. It's a little bit darker there. And even his eye, I'm going to put one little dot right there just, just to keep it from being too bright. Up above here, he's got these veins and stuff up in there, but don't draw those in. Just pick out a little section and hatch through that. You can say, well, here's here's a little vein right here. I'm going to leave that out, and then I'm going to hatch through this. Hatch, 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 hatch. And again, you can use little dots or dashes, whatever you feel like you need. Any place that needs a little dot or a dash. We're going to leave the hair to the end. Let's do the ear now. And the ear is one thing you want to simplify. The edge of his ear is lost. It's gone. You can only see the top edge because of his hair. So if you want to put in the top edge, you can just kind of do this little arch there. There's the top edge. And then there's a little darkness around in there. Just throw that in. Look at the shape that you see. You can throw that in with little dots and dashes. I just can go back into it, darken in some little areas. You want to leave it fairly simple. There's a little shadow on his ear lobe in the bottom, so I'm going to darken that in. There's a cast shadow that goes down his cheek. I'm going to darken that in. A little dark shapes in, in between. That's basically it. The hair then gets defined the top of the ear. I might as well do his neck while I'm here. I'm just going to do these little hatch lines down that, that sternocleidoid mastoid that's right there. I hope I'm saying that right. That's how I was taught to say it. You also notice that I don't always go in the same direction. Sometimes I'll go up, sometimes I'll go down. Now what's going to make this better is the hair. When you do hair, I know it looks like there's a dark line that's right there, but don't draw a line. Instead, come in with your, your pen and do little zigzags in the direction that the hair is flowing. So I can kind of look at that and I can say, well, that hair kind of flows up. And if, if there's light hair that comes around like this, you can just leave it out. In fact, I can go in there and I can put in this little shape in between the hair. A little section over here. And you just leave it out. Anything light, you just leave it out. So I'm just taking little lines going the direction that the flow of the hair is. Now he's got short hair. We did Supergirl the 
uh, fifth period, and she has a ton of hair. That was tough. This guy, not so much. What's important is the, the outside edges of your hair. So you can leave that kind of going so it's not a, a sharp edge, not a sharp line around it. Just let it go. I'm just going to kind of try to give the direction that the hair flows, and then I can come back in and scribble into it. I don't know if you notice, but I, I every now and then I'll look at his face and go, oh, I need something there. I'll just scribble it in. If you're doing a uh, very long hair, sometimes you have little hairs that kind of get away from you. They kind of fly out. So if you got a little a few little hairs that kind of fly out away like this, that's okay. But notice how we haven't really done anything down his eyebrow. Again, if I get rid of all that graphite on his head, it makes it a lot better. Makes it a lot better. And then I just go back into it and scribble in more darkness where you feel like you need darkness. Closer your edge. Here's this little collar kind of sticking up in the back it kind of defines that back side of his his neck and then there's a shadow that kind of comes around the front i'm just going to hatch through that shadow And this part, the front part of that, kind of defines the front of his neck. And you can hatch through that as well. That was really accurate. Accurate. My drawing is accurate? Yeah. Oh. Accurate. There's a first time for everything, Sadie. Huh? First time for everything. This shoulder here is really light. I think I'm going to leave out a lot of that, too. So once you get the head done, and it's kind of nailed really good, and again, we're probably going to have to come back into it because as we draw, uh, we're going to notice some things that we hadn't noticed before. You start training your eye to see things. All of a sudden, you're going to go, oh, I see that. So you may have to come back into it and darken in some more areas here and there.
That nah, happens. It's just you're just kind of scribbling in darks and lights. Well, the lights are already there. So now we're ready for the body, and the body's going to go really fast because if the star isn't quite in the right place, it's okay. Nobody really pays attention to those. And when we get down to the hands, his hands are in gloves, so that's going to make it a little easier to do. I'm really going to pay attention to all this light part on his, his top. And so I'm just going to start in, and wherever I can see a little darkness, I'm going to draw that in. But I'm going to just ignore everything else. Because you can always come back in and just hatch through some things. I don't know what's on his shoulders. So I'm going to just kind of leave those out. Just whatever's there. A couple little dots and dashes and then leave the rest out. And I, I am going overboard a little bit. Normally I, I might draw edges around things. But right now I'm just going to do little shades uh, little hatching marks of, of darkness. And where you go from here, it's kind of up to you. Um, like I say, I always start from the head because the head's important. And as I work my way down, um, sometimes I'll skip around. Not concerned about this edge over here. I'm just going to hatch through some and just say, well, I'm just going to let that edge take care of itself. If, if you can't see the edge, that's okay. Although your eye will make that connection that it's a light edge, there's something there. And I personally like to get as much information as I can. So I'll draw it and then I'll go back in and make it darker here and there. I don't like to darken everything all at once. Because sometimes I'm not really sure and sometimes I'm I'm in doubt. Should I put that in there? Should I? And what's your mantra? When in doubt, leave it out. So again, I'm going to just try to get as much information in there as I can. Even the star, because the star is so light, I'm just going to come in. I'm going to just do a little triangle right there. Leave out the top. Come over here. Put a little triangle down here. And your eye is going to make that connection that that star is there. That might be too big. That's a too big star. That's okay. He just got a bigger star. You know, I never noticed this before, but these little bars across his shoulders, they probably looked at a captain's uniform and said, oh, we're going to design our Captain America's uniform like that. These are captain's bars. I think that's interesting. Always curious where people get their ideas from.
It's always my question to people when I talk to them about their art. Where would you get their ideas from? I just like to know. So again, I have no idea what I'm drawing. I'm just looking at the shapes of dark and light. I'm trying to get those shapes of dark and light in. I'll bet these little neoprene suits are kind of uncomfortable. I don't know. I've done scuba diving in neoprene. It's pretty uncomfortable until you hit the water. And then it's like, oh, I'm so glad they're on because that water is freezing. So at this point, I'm just scribbling. Really, I'm just looking at it going, okay, it's dark. Scribble, scribble, scribble. The important parts are done. Hopefully. I'm trying to get down to the hand as soon as I can. Of course. So I'm trying to get down to the hand as soon as I can. Because uh, there's, there's a technique I have for hands. And uh, it's, it's fairly simple. So I'm going to... Try to block in as much as I can to get down to the hand, and then we can always come back. So let me let me zoom into this. There, there's there's his hand. I know it doesn't look like a hand, but basically what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna get the darkest areas, and usually it's the tips and underneath. So here's here's his thumb. And then there's a tip of his thumb down in here, about right in there. So I do the, the tips of the thumb. And oftentimes, if you've got, like if you can see the hand, you, you, can, you can kind of put in a little bit of the knuckle. But otherwise, that's it. That's all you need for the thumb. The back of the hand, don't know if I see much of that. I think I'll just leave that out. Just do a couple little dots and dashes. There's the knuckle area. Here's a little bit of that. Can hardly see this this last finger. And then again, just like we did the thumb, we're gonna do that for our fingertips. So you kind of come out and say, well, okay, your fingertip is about right in there somewhere. There's a fingertip, and, and this works with gloves or without gloves. Everybody's like, oh, I got to draw every little finger in. No, 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 you don't. 
Just draw the tips, hatch through it, and you got it. Especially with a hand that's closed like this. The other hand you can hardly see, so instead of even drawing in that hand, we'll just block it in and against the darkness or the light of the shield. We got it. I'm going to do that other hand too so I can get to that really quick. And there's a ton that I can leave out. Just because, number one, uh, I don't really need it for the design. And number two, people really aren't looking at it. So especially edges. Really don't, don't be too concerned about edges. Just they take care of themselves. Here's the edge of that shield. It's just a, an ellipse because the shield is nice and round. So I just kind of build that shield up. You, you'd probably notice I didn't start out round. I just kept building it up, building it up until it is kind of round-ish. If I'm really serious about a drawing, I kind of draw it out first. But this is just practice. I'm just scribbling in the darkness. I'm not concerned about the shape of the arm yet. That I can do later. I'm trying to get close, but even that strap that's there, I can just come in and say, well, there's got to be a strap there somewhere. Scribble, scribble, scribble. Here's his hand. I know it's hard to see, but that's that's his thumb. And I'm just going to scribble that in. And everybody says, oh, okay, I get it. That's a thumb. You don't have to, don't have to see every little detail to know what it is.
as you're drawing, uh, especially towards the bottom, if you just kind of throw it in, sketch it in, and then you can just kind of leave it hanging there. And that's kind of nice, too. It's kind of like a, a fading it out as it goes. Nothing wrong with that. The back side of his shield is so light, just just leave out a lot of it. You can put in just a little edge there and maybe a few little hatched lines, but it's pretty light. Whew, now I can get rid of my graphite completely. All done with that. Now I can go back into it anywhere I feel like I need to. And just finish it up. Hopefully, you're just about done with that, ready to put your signature on it. And uh, this is just practice. So you can take it as far as you want to go with this. And that is kind of up to you. But don't abandon it too early. I think uh, most of the time when I see people doing ink drawings, I think to myself, oh, they had such a good start and they just, they left it too early. Good place for his signature would be right, right there by his shield, or maybe even up there. That might be a nice place, or over here by his hand. I don't know. It's kind of up to you. I think I think right there is a good place. Hey, thanks for drawing with me. Thanks for being willing to, to draw something difficult because people are very difficult to draw psychologically and physically because you're trying to get them so perfect. It's good to do hard things, though. Hopefully you had a fun experience today and learned something maybe and even tried something that you've never done before. And hopefully, somewhere along the way, it's made your life a little bit better because art makes life better. <laughs>